this is a video on digital signal processing exam preparation on the next month that is on december the ktu exams are happening and the first subject is digital signal processing so from today onwards we'll be seeing the important questions which have been asked in the uh, previous years of digital signal processing for mainly ktu okay so uh, the first question is find the number of complex multiplication and addition involved in the calculation of 1024 dft that is a 1024 is the length of the bit okay that is n capital n is given as 1024 dft using direct commutation and radix to fft okay so uh, this is a question which has been asked in the last year that is 2018 dsp exam this is a question from 2018 dsp exam Okay, so uh, we know that uh, DFT, in order to calculate DFT, there are two methods. One is you can use the equation method and also there is a simpler or a fast Fourier transform method which is used for calculating the DFT, which we have uh, studied. There are two methods involved in it, that is decimation in time and decimation in frequency. Okay, so why we are going for FFT is actually in order to improve the speed of computation of DFT. So this FFT is actually a tool or it is a method or it is some algorithm which is used for calculating the discrete Fourier transform or your DFT. So many of the students doesn't know this. Actually FFTs are algorithms to calculate DFT in a more simpler method or a more easier method. So uh, what we are going to see in this question is uh, we need to find the number of complex additions and complex multiplications involved in the calculation of the DFT by direct equation method and radix to FFT method. So, if you are going for the direct DFT method, that is equation method, the number of additions involved is, that is addition, number of additions is equal to it is given by the equation n into n minus 1 okay where n is your 1024 so if you substitute the value here 1024 into 1023 so this is a large number okay so the answer is this 1047552 is your answer okay so, this is an equation to calculate the number of complex additions involved. Now, the number of multiplication. The number of multiplications involved is calculated using the term or expression n square. Where again, n is your 1024. So, 1024 whole square. And the answer obtaining is 1048576. Okay, so this is your answer. Now, if this is a direct method, that is you are applying the equation to calculate this DFT. Now, if you are going for FFT method, that is radix to FFT method, then radix to FFT method, number of additions involved is obtained by the equation N log 2N, where your N is 1024. So, it will be 1024 into log 2 of 1024. Right. So, the log 2 of 1024 is 10. So, the answer is 10240 is your answer. So, see how many number has reduced. Right. So, this is a very big number comparing to this 10240. So, if you are going for FFT algorithms to calculate the DFT. So, this is an advantage because the number of computations has reduced to a very large extent. Now, if you are going for radix to FFT, the multiplications involved or the number of multiplications is equal to n by 2 log 2 of n. Now, what is your n by 2? n by 2 is 512, right? So, 512 into log 2n, that is log 2 of 1024 is 10, so into 10. That is 5, 1, 2, 0 is your answer. Now, from this question, what you need to study is this equations. That is the 
the equation to find the number of complex additions and the number of complex multiplications for a direct method and also for radix to f of t method. So for direct method if you are going it will be number of complex additions is n into n minus 1 and the number of complex multiplication is n square. Okay and if you are going for radix 2 methods it will be the number of complex addition is n log 2n and the number of complex multiplications involved is n by 2 log 2n. So these four squares you should be you should understand. Okay, so this is a very common questions, question which has been seen in most of the DSP exam. So, if you are going for DSP exam, please do study these four equations and it will be very easy to do this problem because you are having a calculator. So, it is very easy to do if you know this equation and mostly it will, this is a 100% uh, sure question in your DSP exam. So, what are the uh, equations? I will say it once again. The number of complex additions involved is n into n minus 1 and n square multiplication for your direct DFT that is by equation method and if you are going for radix to FFT then the number of complex additions is n log 2n and the number of complex multiplications is n by 2 log 2n so the number has very much reduced so that is why we are going for radix to FFT methods so I hope you understood this question how to do this question so that's all. Let's see what's the next question. Actually, all the digital signal processing questions will be having either overlap save or overlap add method. So if you're going for uh, the DSP exam, the one of the 100% sure question is either overlap save or overlap add method. Both are actually very simple to study and having only a little bit difference from each other. So if you're studying, if you're going for DSP exam, please do watch the video on overlap save and overlap add. I'll mention it in the description box. Okay, because it is a very sure question or a 100% sure question. So in this question, they are asking to find the convolution of X of N, which is given here, and H of N using overlap save method. Now, I'm not going to do this problem entirely, but I'll tell you how to approach this problem. That is how to do the overlap save method. Okay, you are given an X of N here. The X of N is equal to set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right. So, this is your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is your X of N. Now, what is the length of this sequence? It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right. So, take the length as LS. Okay. So, LS is equal to 5 here. Now, you have your H of N here. Okay. H of N is set 1, 1, 1. Now, take the length of this H of N as M. What is length of M? M is 3. That is your H of N or the impulse signal is having length equal to 3. Now what we have to do for the first step is that we have to divide this X of N into various blocks of length L should be greater than or equal to M. So from this LS we have an LS and we are going to divide this LS into various blocks with L length and this L length should be greater than or equal to M. So for this case this L should be greater than or equal to what? Should be greater than or equal to 3. That is we have to divide this blocks into groups of length at least 3. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like that. So I am going to do it in my step 1. That is I am going to divide my x of n as x1 of n offset 1, 2, 3. So here I have taken my L of length for 3. Because L should be greater than or equal to M. This is the criteria. So it is X1 of N is 1, 2, 3. And X2 of N is set 4 and 5. There is no third element, right? So put a 0 here. That is 0 padding. Now I have divided my X of N as X1 of N and X2 of N. Okay. That is my first step. And in my step 2, what I am going to do is in my step 2, I am going to make this x1 of n, x2 of n and h of n of length L plus M minus 1. Now what is my L here? L is 3. What is my M here? M is also 3. So 
So 3 plus 3 minus 1 that is 5. So what I am going to do is I am going to make the lengths of x1 of n, x2 of n and h of n to length equal to 5. Now how to make the length equal to 5? I will tell you. Okay. So I am going to remove this. Anyway you are known that x of n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 it is given in the question. So I will remove this. Okay, so I am going to make my step 2 or I am going to do my step 2. So, I have my x1 of n here. That is, I need some space. Set 1, 2, 3. And my x2 of n here is set 4, 5 and 0. And also my h of n that is set 1, 1 and 1. Okay. Now my x1 of is or x1 of n is of length 1, 2, 3. x2 of n is also 4, 5 that is 1, 2, 3. And h of n is also length 1, 2, 3. Now we need to make all these three blocks of length equal to 5. Now how will you make it in overlap same method is you have to add you have already L right. You need to add how many more components? M minus 1 components to make it length L plus M minus 1. So I am going to add M minus 1 components. And how I am going to add it? Just see. So for the first block. So this is my first block. So for the first block add M minus 1 zeros at the beginning. So this is your beginning. So you are going to add M minus 1 zeros at the beginning. For the first block. Now for the second block. That is for x2 of n. The n minus 1 blocks of the previous block is being copied to this location. That is 2 and 3 will come here. That is you are going to copy m minus 1 elements from your previous blocks n. That is m minus 1 last elements of your previous block is being copied to the beginning of your next block. That is, here we have only two blocks. But some cases, the length will be very large and we have to make four or five blocks. So, uh, while you, you are doing such questions, you have to follow this method. For the first block, just add m minus 1 zeros at the beginning. Then you will make length l plus m minus 1. For the next block, that is, for the second block, take the m minus 1 elements from your previous blocks end position that is this position and copy it to the beginning of your next block okay so if there was an another block means this 5 and 0 will go to the beginning of that block but here since there are only two blocks we only need to do this much so this is complete now we also have to make the length of h of n equal to L plus M minus 1 which is equal to 5 right. So that is actually done as a separate step. First we have made the length of all our blocks equal to L plus M minus 1 and then we are going to make the length of H of N as L plus M minus 1. So for doing that what we need to do is we need to add M minus 1 zeros at the end position. Okay so all the three blocks now are of length L plus M minus 1 right. Now what we need to do is we need to perform circular convolution of each of these blocks with h of n. That is x1 of n circular convolution h of n and x2 of n circular convolution h of n. So that we will do. I hope this much is clear. So we have made the blocks of length l plus n minus 1 and also we have made the length of our impulse response h of n as l plus n minus 1. Now we need to take the we need to do the step 3. That is take the circular convolution of x1 of n with h of n. Also x2 of n circular convolution h of n. And you will be getting your y1 of n and y2 of n. Right. So this is your step 3. So if you don't know how to perform circular convolution, please do watch out the video on circular convolution. I have explained how to do matrix method circular convolution 
in a very simple method. So you can perform matrix uh, matrix method circular convolution to find the answer of y1 of n and y2 of n. So uh, the, the, the most important criteria to perform circular convolution is that the length of the two blocks should be equal. That is the length of this x1 of n and x2 of n should be equal to perform circular convolution. So here we have already made the length of all the blocks as L plus M minus 1. So nothing to worry here. So we will get Y1 of N and Y2 of N. Right. So just do that. And in the step 4. In the step 4 you have what? In step 4 you have your Y1 of N and Y2 of N. Right. Now in order to find the end result. What we need to do is from the Y1 of N. And y2 of n. So your y1 of n will be like this. There will be a set. And there will be a set y2 of n. Right. So from these two sets. What you need to do is. You need to discard or eliminate. The first m minus 1 elements. So there will be some elements. As m minus 1 elements in the y1 of n and y2 of n. So what you need to do is. You need to discard or eliminate the first m minus 1 elements from each of this block. So for this question you only have y1 of n and y2 of n. But for some questions you would be having y1 of n, y2 of n, y3 of n etc. up to n numbers. So from all those blocks you have to eliminate first m minus 1 elements. Why we are eliminating the first m minus 1 elements? Because they are redundant elements. Because we have copied these elements to this position right. Also here we have copied m minus 1 zeros we have taken so we are eliminating all those elements and if you write the remaining the remaining terms in y1 of n y2 of n and all other outputs you will get your final output one more thing to note that you have obtained your y of n by uh, by concatenating by concatenating and also there is one more thing to note that your final output that is you have eliminated the first m minus 1 elements from all these y1, y2 etc. And you have then written the rest of the elements as a set. Okay. So and that set that is your final output should have only length equal to ls plus m minus 1. So this is not a must step but this is the correct way of doing it. That is you have to take only ls plus m minus 1 elements from your final output and you can discard the rest. Simply you can eliminate the rest. Okay, so this is how you can do your overlap save questions. Also, there is overlap add questions uh, being asked in the SP exam. In the upcoming videos, we will be doing that. Okay, so in this video, we have seen some of the previous year questions of KTU DSP. So this will be useful for your upcoming DSP exam because most of the time, if you see the questions are repeating. So if you practice more and more question papers, you can, uh, you can score good marks. And at least you can get a pass mark. Okay. So uh, if you are practicing questions for your DSP preparation. Please do watch this video. And if you found the video useful. Please do give it a thumbs up. And also share with all your friends who are preparing for KTU DSP exams. And also any other DSP exam. Okay. Of any other university. So uh, we will be seeing with more questions in the upcoming videos. We will be discussing mostly all the questions which have been asked in the previous year DSP exams.